Hey guys, Jeremy here. Uh, sorry it's been a while. Um, just taking a little break here from the work uh, to talk to you about something that we all saw coming. Uh, <laughs> Netflix's Resident Evil has been cancelled. According to Dateline, the Netflix released a statement along the lines of the drama did not have a particularly strong showing on Netflix's top 10 and cost versus viewing is a streamer's leading new renewal criterion. They Trade also points out that Resident Evil was positioned to ride on the coattails of Stranger Things with similar themes of teens taking on horrifying lab, lab spawn menace but couldn't hold on to a Stranger Things size audience. Two things, no shit. Um, just because there's teens in it, like which isn't even an association of what actual Resident Evil IP is, they put it into this show. It was just not a very well done show. The beginning of it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't like horrible, horrible. But as it got along, I God, guys, I was dragging my feet over those last three episodes. Those last three episodes were just god awful. It's unfortunate too because I'm, I'm unfortunately Lance Reddick is out of work again, which means now that he can't get any more breadsticks from Olive Garden. But it sucks because, like, I, I, I understand that there was, you know, a hate or dislike that he was cast as Albert Wesker. Um, now some people can say it's like race swapping and whatnot. I think he's a great actor, and this was obviously a different interpretation of the character. Um, does that mean it was a good idea? I was waiting to see if it could have been executed well. And for the most part, he's the only reason why I watched the whole way, the show all the way through. The girls, both the younger versions and the older versions, were not exactly the best well-written. If anything, they were terribly well-written, and that's because you have Andrew Dabb, the last showrunner of Supernatural, who is this fat f fucking mid-40-year-old who thinks he understands what angst is, and he doesn't. He does not understand what it is. He is terrible at writing younger characters. Um, and it bled over into this show, along with some absolutely despicably terrible humor. Um, the one that I actually I do admit that keeps on like getting brought up, brought up is the, the, the businesswoman doing the dancing and singing choreography. That actually isn't as dumb as it seems because the whole idea was a lady was winking that uh, what was it, that uh, anti-depression drug that could kind of coerce people into doing what they would want to do, and in the end she becomes the very thing that she was trying to push onto other people. That wasn't too bad. Was the song a little bit weird and out of nowhere? Yes. But there was other jokes, like the fucking Zootopia porn one, which was just like, whoa, <laughs> thought that was a good idea. So yeah, we unfortunately do not have another season of the Resident Evil Netflix coming, and I will be honest, I imagine a lot of Resident Evil fans are rejoicing. It's just kind of odd that at this point, still the best interpretation of Resident Evil, and interpretation is a very, very, um, <laughs> it's a liberal word, is Paul W.S. Anderson's films. Because even though Welcome to Raccoon City was accurate to the first two games if you know if you can call it that it still was put together with like shoestring budget and it seemed like a it actually wasn't even a shoestring budget it was like 30 million but it just seemed like it was so haphazardly put together and clearly the guy had some ideas that were related to Resident Evil like he did a few things that were pretty darn accurate and actually like dipping into lore that a lot of people don't talk about too much but then Leon S Kennedy is the complete opposite of what his character is it mu that must have been a producer thing that had to have been i can't imagine like when you've got like f fucking what's her name bag on head girl Ellie, uh, Leah, Lisa, whatever, in the basement. She's just there. And I was like, wow, that's a really obscure reference to the first Resident Evil game, the remake, uh, more so. But then Leon Kennedy is a drunk little loser, which is like, okay. But either way, Resident Evil Netflix is no longer coming back. Um, unfortunately, Lance Reddick has to look for work again, which I feel bad for the guy. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I, I did not see this coming <laughs> because and this is something that I I really wish out of all the statistics that Netflix has I really wish that they would give us the graph of how many people stick on after the first episode 
because I imagine the drop-off rate must have been catastrophic. Uh, I, you know, if I ever want to depress myself, I go to look at my YouTube analytics and I watch how many people will drop off my videos after the first two to three minutes. If I want to give myself a real good kick in the balls, I will take a look at that. So I imagine that this must have been the same thing because it got up to it got up to number one for a couple of days on top ten, but then it just went bleh, and I think it was just word of mouth, people wanting to watch the first episode because they were hearing so many bad things about it and just that curiosity sake like that's why I watched Morbius admittedly at, at, at home and not legally but I did wanted to see just was like how how did this movie like is it as bad as it everyone says it is is Morbin time an actual lion in the movie so yeah that's kind of where we are at. What do you guys think? Are you guys happy that, that it's not coming back? If it did come back, what would you have guys have thought they could have done better? It, my honest opinion, I feel that they should have definitely delved more into the sister thing. Like, in terms of just what on earth happened to the other sister. Like, she went... Like, there's this huge gap in between the two of them that is just so unsolved that... It was done on purpose, and yet they didn't need to. They could have concised that, but fucking Dad was like, oh no, I'll go leave people hanging. But on the plus side too, Andrew Dad doesn't have a job, so hopefully that motherfucker can never get any good, decent television again. But anyways, I that's all for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Leave me your guys' comments below about what you guys think about the situation, and hope you guys are having a good weekend. See you guys next time.